so nice to be here today. My name is Marley Oden, and I've been involved with the Arts Club Theatre, I guess, off and on since 1980. I was very young. You know, people always want to know. They'll come to the Stanley and they'll say, oh, I saw your name in the lobby. What did you do? And, and you know, you don't even know where to begin. When we started thinking that we wanted to have a theatre here, it was actually about two theatres here. It was Theatre Sports that actually came forward with the idea to do two theatres in this building. There was a society called Save the Stanley Society that was concerned that it was going to be torn down or turned into a gap or, God forbid, it might have become one of those ubiquitous coffee companies as well. So Theatre Sports and the Arts Club got together, that was Jay Ono and Bill Millard, and they decided that they'd see what they could do about Saving the Stanley. So a board was struck and fundraising ideas came out and a couple of fundraisers were actually hired. And again, you know, in that day there weren't the same level of fundraisers and, and capital campaign people that there are now. So we did have a little bit of a revolving door of fundraisers raising nothing and going and fundraisers raising nothing and going. And we were not getting very far. So we decided that the board would have to take a larger hands-on approach. And we, working with Bill, we rolled up our shirt sleeves and we decided, what are we gonna do? And um, I stepped off the board to, to spend more time, really basically probably 60% of my time, trying to figure out how we could make the Stanley happen and working with Stephanie Hargreaves. We had a little office uh, next door above the Stanley and we had struck a capital campaign committee that was pretty good. Jackson Davies was a big part of that. And we worked with the city of Vancouver to get the density funding through the walls and um, raised a fair bit of money, not all of it, but a fair bit of money in a market that was not used to giving generously. We had a lot of community people chip in, donating time, donating energy, um, and helping out because, again, the whole community really wanted to see this building stay and they were excited about being a theatre. The odd thing or the conundrum about that was it didn't translate into people giving money. So not even in the $25 levels for a lot of people. We did open houses and that. But we managed through a lot of hard work and a lot of asking to be able to raise the money and to have you know different tradesmen come in. For example, the gold dome that's right above my head right now. We had a group of retired, retired workmen who came in and did the gold leaf and did it by hand and donated it, it because it wouldn't look as nice if it was just painted with gold paint. You can see all these little guys spray painting gold paint. No, no, no. It's all gold leaf. It's absolutely fabulous. And we had retired guys help us with the neon in the front of the building. It was prohibitive. It would have been millions to replace it and restore it. But you have to remember it's, all, it's a heritage building as well. So we had so many people come together and do so many things. And while we were doing all of that, we had to get ready for opening night. We actually couldn't believe we were going to make it to opening night you know, things always get a little bit behind and all of a sudden there'd be water in the basement and we had to seismically upgrade the building and you would think you wouldn't have to go that far to seismically upgrade the building. I think we nearly went to the center of the earth putting in the support beams. It, they just kept drilling and drilling and drilling. It was quite something so we got a little bit behind. So what show were we going to open with? Well most people know we open with Swain and that we open with that uh, no one had really heard of him then, Michael Bublé. So we were in here rehearsing uh, the show and Stephanie and I would come and watch and I remember one of the first dress rehearsals, the two of us were sitting in the second from the last row at the back of the main floor of the orchestra, watching the show and how it was being teched and settling in and we just looked at each other and we had these great big grins on our face because we knew, we knew it was gonna knock it out of the park. And that, and this guy, he had a je ne sais quoi. He's not the guy we know now. You know, he's polished and a little more polished and he looks a little bit different. But boy, that talent was there and it was there in spades. And what a terrific, what a terrific guy too. So we knew we had the good show. So how were we gonna light up the whole city, so to speak, with the Stanley opening? Because while it had a lot of heart share for us and for people in the neighborhood and we'd given our heart and soul, we wanted to make sure we got national coverage on this, this big event. There was a lot of blood, sweat and tears. So we had a spectacular opening. We, we uh, had the parking lot or the number of parking lots behind the theater tented and we had uh, different restaurants who donated time and, and food and we had a beautiful sit down dinner. It was a fundraiser again because we did have a little bit of a mortgage so we couldn't just be giving things away. We had vintage cars parked in front with people 
in costume because swing was was a period piece of course we had Klieg lights going it was spectacular and we did get national media coverage out of it it was just sensational evening I thought Stephanie and I were going to die by midnight because it had not been weeks it had not been months it had been years it had been almost five years of going through everything so it was it was absolutely stupendous and I think for everyone who's lived in the neighborhood or lived in the city, they can honestly say the opening of the Stanley transformed South Granville. And that's what theater does. It doesn't just transform people and individuals and audience. It transforms neighborhoods, which transforms cities, which is spectacular. The reason that I always support the arts is I've got more out of it than I've ever given to it the stimulation I felt, uh, the challenges intellectually, the joyous times I've had with my young children growing up. They crawled around the stages at the Arts Club in the Stanley when they were little, and the conversations that we've had, it's made them become better people. And why wouldn't we want to do that?